Hello, welcome to Valheim by the Numbers. Today we'll be going over the best armor for every situation in Valheim. But before we get started, we need to talk about defense in Valheim, more specifically the Valheim Defensive Onion. So this chart is going to break down the layers of defense a player in Valheim has at their disposal. At the top layer, we have avoidance. So that's just the concept of you know not being near the enemies you don't want to be near. It's very unlikely that you'll be attacked by a leech if you're not in the water near the swamp. Below that, we have the layer of stealth, so not getting seen by your enemies. The one armor set that helps this is the troll set. So the troll set, if you have the full set bonus, is going to give you plus 15 points in your stealth. And so that remains a viable option until the end of the game due to that special bonus. The layer after that is evasion. So evasion is once you get spotted, you're just your ability to get out of there. Now, most armor in the game hurts this. Some of it is neutral, but the only armor in the game that actually helps your speed and thus your ability to get away is the Fenris set. So the next layer, the onion, is going to be the magic hamster ball. So the magic hamster ball is the protective bubble cast by the staff of protection. And your ability to repeatedly cast this or consistently cast this is going to be helped by the Eater Weave set as that will give you more magic regeneration. After that, the next layer of defense is your dodging, then your parrying, then your blocking. Uh, none of the armors really assist with those, so we're going to kind of gloss over those. The next layer of defense is going to be the active effects. So these are going to be your potion effects or also effects that are brought about by different sets or different pieces of armor. So specifically the root armor has both positive and negative effects. The Fenris set as a whole has a fire resistance effect and a few of the capes have frost resistance as well as the feather cape reducing fall damage. Finally, the second to last piece of the defensive onion is the armor value. So the armor value is going to be what mostly reduces the damage that you take, and all, all pieces of armor affect this to varying degrees. And finally, the last layer of the defensive onion is just your health pool. So the higher your health, the more damage you take before you die. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about how to defend yourself in the first biome of the game. So in the meadows, you have two choices of armor, rag and leather. The Neither one has a speed debuff nor any active effects. So leather be having the higher armor value is just objectively going to be your, your best armor in every situation from the meadows to Ikethir to even a Draugr village. Not that you should probably take one on at this point. Now, when you end up coming back to the meadows or traveling through the meadows towards the end of the game, your most defensive option against the Meadows creatures is going to be just your heavy armor, and the most defensive option against Ikethir will be your root chest plate. However, all of these damage values are so low that it doesn't really matter, and you can kind of wear whatever you want. I tend to choose Fenris because of the speed boost. However, if you really like magic, it might help to go with the Eater Weave set. Now, once we move on to the Black Forest, we start to get a few more options. So when you first start out in the Black Forest, of course, your best option is still going to be that weather armor from the meadows. However, as you start to progress through, you end up with kind of three different lines. You have the heavy line, which is going to be full bronze armor. You have the troll line, which is just the full troll armor. And then you have the what I call the fast line. So that's going to give you still the maximum speed for this era, while also giving you the most protection. So as you can see, for all circumstances at this point in the game. The heavy armor is going to give you the most defense, while the troll and the fast are going to give you the most speed. The troll armor does have the bonus, or the sneak bonus, so that'll allow you to avoid some fights. However, fighting in Valheim tends to be pretty necessary, so I end up kind of ignoring that bonus anyways. So I tend to prefer going with the fast armor when running through this era. Now, when you end up coming back at the end of the game, you have obviously a lot more choices at your disposal and at that point the damage values are still low enough that I tend to just run Fenris for most things. However, uh, when it comes to fighting the Elder again, if you're not so confident, doing some kind of, you know, fast root chest plate setup, so Fenris with a root chest plate will help reduce a lot of that damage. Uh, additionally, if you really like magic, of course, working that in there. And we'll probably talk about magic more towards the end of the video and how to work that into different types of armor sets. 
course, despite the damage values being very low, if you technically want the, the best defense, heavy armor is going to generally be the best for the Black Forest. The Root Mask will be the best for the Burial Chambers due to the Rancid Remains. The Elder, the, you'll get the most defense out of a Root Chestplate. And with Brenna, you're going to get the most out of the Fenris set because of that fire resistance. Now, of course, if you drink a fire resistance barley for whatever reason, heavy armor will then be your most protective option. Now, moving into the swamp. So when you're first going into the swamp, after you've defeated the Elder, your most defensive option is still going to be the full bronze set. However, due to the rain in the swamp and thus the lack of stamina, it's unbelievably helpful to have that extra 10% speed from the fast to the troll armor. So I would highly recommend going with the fast armor so you get a little bit more defense and it's easier to collect the resources to make it. Now, as you start to progress through the swamp era levels of armor, you'll start to have a lot more options as you can start to integrate root pieces into other armor sets. Now, the most defensive option in all situations in the swamp is gonna be the root mask. So that's just the root mask and full iron armor. And this is due to the, the poison resist on the, the root mask, which is gonna help you against the blobs, the oozers, and the leech damage. However, uh, if you drink a poison resist potion, the root mask is no longer as helpful, and your most defensive option becomes the heavy armor. And this is what I would recommend when it comes to bone mass, as you're gonna get that higher level of poison resist from a poison resist potion, and the heavy armor will help reduce all of the blunt damage and all of the, the minion damage. So as you might have noticed, Draugr's, due to their ranged variant doing piercing damage, their, your most defensive option at this point against them is going to be heavy armor with a root chest plate. Now similarly, leeches, uh, their best option due to their pierce and poison damage is going to be a poison resist mask and also the root chest plate with heavy leggings. And that's actually the combination that I tend to run through most of the swamp due to the 3% speed bonus over just having a root mask, and because I hate collecting iron. Now, when I come back at the end of the game, in pretty much all circumstances, I will continue to run Fenris due to that 9% speed buff, uh, and the damage numbers still being a, an acceptable low level. Now, if I try to go kill Bone Mass again, I tend to not want to worry about it, and so I'll wear a root mask. Or if I am not quite at the end of the game, I'll wear heavy armor and drink a poison resist potion. Moving on to the mountains. So now you'll see that our options start to bloom quite a bit. And so when you first get into the mountains, your most defensive option is still going to be a root chest plate. And that's due specifically to the piercing variant of the stone golem. However, everything else in the mountains doesn't do any form of piercing damage, so as long as you avoid the stone golems, uh, heavy armor will remain your your most defensive option in all mountain situations at this point. Despite that, when I first get into the mountains, I tend to wear either the, the root chest for the protection, or I will wear the fast set of armor. And this is because the mountainous terrain is just so vertical, or it can be so vertical, that you really need that speed option in order to get away from things such as a swarm of drakes or a pack of wolves. Now moving into the mountain era of armor, your most defensive option remains the same, being the heavy armor, uh, except of course with the piercing stone golem, the, the root chest plate being your most defensive option. Uh, however, something to definitely note is that when you first enter the frost caves, you should definitely take off anything that you're wearing that is root, as you will get cooked alive like a marshmallow when facing the cultists. Well, heavy armor is your most defensive option at this point in the game for, you know, all situations in the mountains. I tend to prefer running the full Fenris set as it is hard to not appreciate a plus 9% speed bonus. Similarly, I'll end up running Fenris in pretty much all situations when I come back at the end of the game, at least when it comes to the mountains with the one exception being if I want to kill motor. When I want to kill motor at a mountain's level of gear, I'll generally wear heavy armor, as that extra protection can be very useful, as you're not really doing as much running it around, uh, around when you're fighting motor. Similarly, when fighting motor at the end of the game, I'll still generally wear a heavy set, as that'll offer the most protection, 
or I'll work in some magic gear if I'm planning on fighting motor with, you know, fireballs. Now, when you're first starting off in the plains after, you know, coming out of the mountains, running or just for running around purposes, your most defensive option will be a root chest plate. However, I would typically recommend doing the root chest plate with the Drake helmet and Fenris pants to give you a little bit of extra speed when running around. When it comes to the growth pits, however, your most defensive option will be the root mask. However, I would still recommend just, you know, wearing a root mask along with Fenris set. That way you can try to avoid as many of their attacks as possible. And it might also still be helpful to wear the, the root chest plate in case you're getting attacked by Deskitos and Fuelings at the same time. Now, when you first start off with the Fueling Villages, your most defensive option is the heavy armor, however a full Fenris set is generally prefer preferable as you can use that massive speed bonus to better elude the, uh, you know, and strafe around the horde. Uh, additionally, the Fenris set will actually give you the most protection possible when first starting off in the plains against the fueling shamans. Now, when it comes to Yaglith, technically your most defensive set by itself is the Fenris set. However, that is uh, if you drink a fire resist potion, which will give you a, a higher level of fire resistance, then the heavy armor becomes substantially better. And so that's what I would generally recommend when fighting Yaglith at any point. Uh, additionally, when it comes to the mini boss, you're in a very confined area, so the additional speed bonus of you know, the Fenris set isn't really going to help you, so I would highly recommend just wearing heavy armor. The only major difference uh, in my loadout that I take later on in the game is that when just running around in the plains, I will tend to take off the heavy helmet and throw on the Fenris hood just for some extra speed, because I can usually make up for that, you know, loss of extra armor with better food. Now at last, we've come to the Mistlands. So, when first starting off in the Mistlands, overall your most defensive thing is just going to be heavy armor with a root chest plate. Due to some of the Seeker's attacks doing piercing damage, all of the Tick, Seeker Brood, and Verger Rogue attacks doing piercing damage. So, with all of those combined, the, the root chest plate is generally going to be your, your best option for running around in the Mistlands. Now, running around in the Mistlands at night gets a little bit more iffy due to the starred yalls, so I'd probably start to steer more towards the, the heavy armor. And when running around in the Mistlands, in case you come across a yall, definitely bring a, a heavy chest plate with you so you can, you know, take take off the, the vulnerable root chest plate. Um, technically, when starting off, your, your best option or your best defensive option would be the Fenris set. However, due to the fact that the Yulls drop ticks, and the ticks do massive amount of damage, uh, at least compared to you know your, your health pool when starting off in the Mistlands, I'd highly recommend you just kind of go the, the middle route and wear the heavy armor. Now, when it comes to the infested mines, at any point you should definitely be wearing a root chest plate, as nothing in there does fire damage and lots of things do pierce. <laughs> uh, specifically the ticks, the seeker broods, the seekers. The only thing that really doesn't is the seeker soldier. And so I uh, highly, highly recommend that you bring a, a root chest plate to the infested mines. Now, things get a little bit more interesting when it comes to fighting with the divergers, because it really depends on what kind of divergers you know you come up against so if you're coming up against the diverger fire mage your best defense will technically be the fenris armor uh, the frost mage would be heavy armor and the support mage would still be the fenris armor so uh, but with the rogues it would be the root chest plate due to their piercing damage now the root chest plate will make you very vulnerable to the fire mages and the support mages and the Fenris armor is not going to end up giving you the best protection against the Frost and the Rogues. So what I would generally recommend is plan your armor according to the types of Divergers at the specific tower that you're going to attack. And generally that'll work out to probably be heavy armor or heavy or Fenris armor. Now, as you start to acquire armor pieces for the Mistlands, you know, armor level, uh, the Eater Weave set starts to become available. Now, the Eater Weave set 
can, uh, as a whole set, can be a great bonus for playing as some kind of support role where you have other friends tanking the damage. However, if you're not confident in your friends or you're playing solo, I often tend to work the magic sets into whatever the most defensive armor is for that situation. So generally that means swapping out, first swapping out the leggings for the Eater Weave uh, pants. And then if I still need additional magic regeneration, then it'll either be the helmet or the chest plate, uh, depending on whether or not it's a, a root chest plate. So if the most defensive option for that situation is a root chest plate, it might make sense to swap out the helmet. However, in pretty much all other situations, it makes more sense to swap out the chest plate as your second piece of magic gear. Uh, due to the fact that it has a 20% higher magic regen than the helmet does. So now that we've addressed that magical caveat, we'll go ahead and talk about the queen. So in all circumstances, the root chest plate with heavy armor is going to be the most defensive option for the queen. So if you're up front tanking damage, I would highly recommend you wear this set as it'll provide the best protection against the queen herself since one or two of her attacks does a significant amount of pierce damage as well as the seekers and seeker broods that she tends to summon in now of course if you're playing a more su support role working magic in can also be an, a, an effective help now there is one more thing to mention as you start to beat more and more of the bosses Creatures applicable to that boss will start to spawn in previous biomes, which they were not in pre previously. So, for instance, uh, once you beat Ikethir, now Grey Dwarfs will start to spawn in the meadows. Then you beat the Elder, Brutes, and Shamans will start to spawn in the meadows. And this continues up until you get to the Queen. And once you've beaten the Queen, now you're going to start to see starred Ticks and Seekers and Seeker Broods spawning in the meadows, the Black Forest, the mountains, and the plains. So, uh, with that in mind, your best armor situation might change a little bit if you're concerned about these new entities, and you should probably refer back to previous parts of this video in order to account for that. And with that, we've covered all of the best armor combinations for every situation in the game. However, most of this has been based off a few thousand lines of Python code and a bit of my own opinion. So, if we've made any mistakes or there's something that you vietnamese disagree with, then be sure to let us know in the comments below explaining why. And also, feel free to comment below with what your favorite set is so that people can start debating you. Now, of course, these videos take a long time to make, so it would be greatly appreciated if you'd also like and subscribe, as it helps out the channel immensely and lets us know that this kind of content is something that you want to see in the future. And with that, have a good one, happy gaming, and best of luck in the Ashlands.